the no. There we are. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to OLC 4.0, Term 1B. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty. Today is January 19th, 2023. We are working on class number 31. Hard to believe it's been 31 classes, but we're almost done. So there's 36 classes in total. So we'll have uh, five more to go. So we'll broadcast tomorrow at 10 a.m. to make up for Missing Tuesday. And today's class will cover Unit 4, Lesson 19, Assignment 43. So we'll, we'll spend time on that one today. And then tomorrow, we'll talk about the literacy portfolio. And then we'll have every, every assignment wrapped up. And then we'll spend next week going over the final exam. And just taking stock of the whole course. So... So we're in week eight of classes in term one B. So, you know, week nine is the last one. So one more week of classes, and then we'll spend that week uh, getting ready for your final exam, culminating activities. So, so just like the last assignment in this course asks you to take stock of everything you've produced in this course. You're looking back at all the hard work you put in, and then you're picking out the best works and talking about what you've learned. We'll do that next week, and we'll review all of those assignments. We'll look at the, uh, the big ideas of this course. We'll talk about the reading and the writing skills that you've learned. And those reading and writing skills are what's going to help you with the final exam. And that is the purpose of the final exam, is to, is to test you and to ensure that you've picked up those skills and successful completion of OLC 4.0 is really dependent on your ability to, to demonstrate that you have those communication skills, those reading and writing literacy skills, because that's really what literacy is all about. Literacy is all about uh, communication. And so week nine's our last week, and January 26th will be the last broadcast. So we've got one, two, and three taken care of. We're almost done, unit four. And then week nine, we will tackle that final exam. Make sure you're ready to go. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can always pause that screen, take note of ways you can uh, participate live, in your class. So all your classes are like this. So if you're taking more than one class with WASA, we, they all have an opportunity to participate live and watch them. Uh, but of course, if uh, watching the YouTube is better for your situation, then that's then that's fine. So the, the videos are all up there. We've got the first 30 classes up on the up on the YouTube channel now. And then I just want to point out that they are organized by uh, playlists. And the playlist, one of them is just OLC 4.0. It has all of them. And then you'll find a unit 1, 2, 3, and 4 playlist. So if you're looking for a particular unit, just click on that playlist. And it should be there in chronological order in the date that it was posted. You should see you know, classes 9 through 15 or whatever the case may be. Again, you can pause that screen and just take note of the ways you can submit work to this course. All of this information is of course in your study guide and it can be it can be found out by contacting me by one of the methods you see on the screen there by phoning your learning center, talking to your local DEC and phoning the WASA office which is the right here. That's our local number and phone that number if you are out of the area and want to do a free long distance phone call. And you'll want to do that 9 to 3, Monday through Friday. That's the best time to talk to me. If you want to get an immediate response from me, that's the time to do it. And as I mentioned yesterday, you should have read assignments 1, 2, and 3 by now. You And you should be reading most of assignment, uh, sorry, unit 4 as well. So it's probably best to, if not if not read the entire unit, maybe use some of the reading strategies we've talked about in this class, like skimming and scanning, 
So before you watch the video, before you participate in the class live, it's always a good idea just to review the material, write down some questions you might have that need answering, and that's a good strategy for whatever education you take in the future. So if you, if you, if you get your Ontario Secondary School Diploma and then you want to go on to college or university or you know work in the trades or whatever the case may be, there's always going to be opportunities for you to get training. And whenever possible, um, even if you don't have the time to read the whole thing, if you just kind of get yourself in that mindset and kind of get yourself primed and just ready to take in that information. So you should have assignments 1 through 39 taken care of and make a plan for completing assignment 39 and beyond. And as we'll see, you can't complete assignment 43 before you've completed all the assignments. And uh, you can't compile or collect your works for the portfolio if you haven't actually done the work. So you have to do all those works to complete assignment 43 and to prepare your literacy portfolio. So we're going to look at some images and words of the day, look at a headline, we'll tackle assignment 43, and if we have some time, we can delve into the literacy portfolio. So time permitting, we'll, we'll see how we do, but I think most of today's class will be devoted to assignment 43. Our learning goals are to reflect upon your progress in OLC 4.0, and to review the writing process to create an outline for your longest writing assignment of this course. So assignment 43 is four paragraphs long. So it's good to do an outline. And you can't write this assignment until you've reflected upon your progress. So that's going to be part of your planning process. Remember, the writing process is a five-step process. And step number one is planning. And a big part of your planning process will be, well, not a big part, a, an essential part that, you know, you have to do. It's going to be reflecting, looking back on your work. And you'll be successful if you, you know, watch and listen and pay attention to this class and then put the work in by selecting your best works produced by working through OLC 4.0 and then creating an outline for assignment 43 and then work towards producing a rough draft. So we're, the planning process is going to lead towards a rough draft, which you will then edit, revise, and turn into something even better. So I wanted to touch upon the, the concept of um, an opinion, right? Because assignment 43 technically is an opinion piece. You are giving your opinion about your best work. So as a teacher, I could look at your portfolio and I could look at all of your best assignments. And then I could say, you know, that one's your best one. Your news report was your best article or your, your brochure, that's your best article. But you could have a different opinion. And then... You know, um, just because I'm the teacher doesn't mean I'm necessarily right in that case. Um, and when we're talking about your best works, it's also like it's not necessarily the best grade you got, but like the assignment that was the most meaningful to you, the one that you felt taught you the most. So that's where your opinion comes in. And that's why I put a couple of more political cartoons, which I love because they're simple one panel cartoons, but they contain a lot of ideas. Um, within them. So I did a Google search for the best uh, political cartoons of the past year and the best political cartoons um, over the course of like the past 10 years, 15 years. So on the left, we've got a Canadian example. We've got the PMO, which is an acronym that stands for the Prime Minister's Office. And this, this one is from, I believe this was from last year, February last year. And it says Ukraine on line one. They're offering to send assistance. So the joke being there um, is that, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau is under attack um, from his own people, from his own critics. Um, February 22, we're going back a year. This is when the, the trucker convoy 
has um, ha has taken over Ottawa, and there's a lot of disruption in that city. So that's the joke there, and the opinion is that um, what's happening with with Trudeau's government, you know, he he needs a lot of help, and he's under attack, and saying that the situation is like worse than the Ukraine is is a bit of a is a bit of a jump but they're just they're doing that for shock value they're trying to be funny but they're trying to ex they're trying to express an opinion and that is the opinion that he's in trouble he's under attack on the right we've got Barack Obama and he's jumping off the high dive platform and then underneath we've got you know the amazing Obama we've got the donkeys on the left and the donkey is, of course, the animal that represents the, the Democrats in America. I don't know why they picked the donkey, but they did. And the elephants are the Republicans. So a lot of American political cartoons will feature donkeys and Republicans. And, and that, and that can be really confusing to people who don't understand that. But uh, for whatever reason, they've chosen those two animals to be uh, emblematic or representing their parties so the democrats are saying this is going to be good and the republicans are also saying this is going to be good but if you pay attention to their facial expressions um so the democrats are optimistic they're happy that he's diving into this health care pool right so if you're familiar with american politics barack obama tried to go for universal health care tried to bring that to the american people and the Republicans kind of, th they're expecting it to be a bad idea, and it did cause Barack Obama a lot of problems, and he never actually achieved health care. You know, universal health care like we have in Canada wasn't really achieved in America. So that that's, that's the opinion being expressed here. The Democrats are kind of hopelessly optimistic, thinking this situation is going to be a good idea, and the, the Republicans are a little more negative and cynical and think it's going to be terrible. But they're happy about that. <laughs> so a lot to unpack there. So on to our words of the day. Uh, we've got a, an Anishinaabe Moan word. Um, ikiduen, which is a noun, which means a word, or it could be speaking. So it, it, it can be used as a noun, uh, a, w uh, a word. It can be also used as a verb, right? So speaking. Um, or just or or as a noun like the idea of speaking. On the English side we have the word communicate, which is a verb, which is to share or exchange information, news or ideas. From the Latin communis, which is common, um and communicat, which is shared. So really important to look at those Latin roots when you're studying the English language and if you're um if you're like me and you love etymology and etymology is the study of word origins like where words originate where they come from a lot of words come from latin so i think latin and greek are probably you know i've read that they make up uh as many as like 40% uh, of of the English language comes from those two sources, Latin and Greek. And if you've ever watched the Harry Potter movie, uh, every time Harry Potter or his friends or the the bad guys do a spell, it's usually a Latin word. Um, so if if you if you hear the word, you can kind of know the roots of it. Like to turn someone to stone is Patronus, and you know that that's a, that's the Latin root for the, for stone or rock or mineral. So communication is about um, sharing and things that are common to us. So it's about sharing information, a back and forth idea. Got a few more words in the Anishinaabe Moan language. We got um, um, agindan, which is a to count it or read. It's a verb. Um, Ojibwe igade, which is a verb, which is it is written by someone. They write it. Nitawabian, which is a verb, which is know how to write it. So these are all verbs on the same um, on the same thing. They're they're all verbs that uh, they're all action words that are about either writing, counting, expressing something. So 
In the English, we have the word express, which is to convey a thought or feeling in words or by gestures and conduct. From the Latin ex, which means to push out. And pressare, which means to press. So, so when we say you express something, it literally means to press it out. You know, to, to get it out of yourself, right? So you, you're, you're pressing your thoughts out of your brain, your, th your feelings, right? So, and there, there's actually a lot of... Um, there's a lot of talk about that, like when people have mental health issues or when they're going through a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, that can come from a lot of different reasons, but sometimes it comes from just holding things in and not expressing, not pressing them out. And there's, there's a really great Greek word called catharsis, which is, um, and I believe we've done that word before in this class, it's just getting, getting emotions out, you know, um, and it means to kind of purge them. And then when you hold on to those thoughts and you don't tell anybody about them, um, it can kind of do some damage to yourself. So, And that's like a really kind of extreme example, but it's just always good to express things and to, and to get your words out there. And that's what communication really is. We have declare, a verb, which is say something in a solemn. Solemn, which basically just means, you know, serious. And emphatic, which means like really strongly worded. From the Latin de, which is de, which is thoroughly, and clara, clare are, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, which means to make clear. So to make clear thoroughly. So if you declare something, you're doing it powerfully, and you're doing it very seriously. So here's our word of the day. Um, so there, there's the premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Now, when he made the announcement, he would have been declaring it. He would have been doing it emphatically. He would have been doing it powerfully. And he would have been doing it very solemnly, which he did. I mean, I, I heard this press conference on the radio. So Ontario announces plan to increase surgeries at private health care clinics. So, you know, so going back to that political cartoon with uh, Barack Obama. And, you know, Canada is known for having universal health care. It's something that Canadians are, are proud of. But of course, um, health care in Canada is not perfect, and the pandemic has exposed a lot of weaknesses. And the problem is, is a, a lot of people in Ontario and Canada, they need really critical surgeries, and they can't get them because the public health care system is kind of backed up, and that's why he wants to increase uh, sort of that private. You know, and private health care means you're paying for it. You're, you're putting up the big bucks to pay for it. And so in America, most of their health care is private. And hospitals are, hospitals are run by corporations as opposed to the government and their for-profit institutions. Um, same with the jails. Um, like in Canada, our criminal justice systems and the jails are for the most part... Um, run by the government, but in America, they're run by private corporations. And that's, you know, one, one of the f huge differences between Canada and the U.S. Like, we're very similar countries, but we do disagree and we do do things differently on some pretty fundamental levels. So, so the headline reads, Ontario announces plan to increase surgeries at private health care clinics. So, of course, Ontario is the subject of our article. This is also a proper noun. And so this, this is a, a tactic that a lot of writers will use. So um, I, I, if, we're, if we're speaking technically, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a concept called a... And here's another great... Uh, I believe it's a Greek word. Uh, See if I can spell this word right. Synec Synecdoche. That's a very obscure word, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, so a synecdoche is when a part stands in place for the whole. Like when, when you say the crown to represent, um, you know, like the, the government. Or, you know, when one thing just represents everything. So a s in this case, Ontario... You know, literally, Ontario is a province, but when they say Ontario, what they really mean is the Ontario government, right? 
So on the Ontario government, and what did they do? They announced, that's a verb, a plan to increase surgeries. So we've got our verbs, our doing things. So the subject is Ontario. The predicate is what they did, announce a plan to increase surgeries. But they didn't just do that. They want to increase surgeries at a preposition. So they want to increase surgeries at clinics, but not just any clinic. We're talking private health care clinics, right? So I, I would actually, I would say that's one and this is probably two, right? So we're not just talking about clinics. We're talking about private health care clinics because Canada, Canada has many kinds of clinics, um, and and then within that category we have healthcare clinics, right? And then a further subdivision of that would be um, private healthcare clinics. So we have we have public healthcare clinics, we have private healthcare clinics, and then we have clinics that aren't uh, aren't healthcare clinics. They're like more like private institutions or very specific kind of clinics, like uh, like one for like you know like sun tanning or maybe like stuff that's not quite as essential as is happening at other clinics so do a quick little breakdown of the article so we talked about this yesterday additional information so um, about a noun so Ontario will boost the number of surgeries at private health care clinics starting immediately with cataract procedures so that's the additional information that could have been contained with brackets but the author has chosen to use commas so that's a, a writing strategy, a writing tool that I'm hoping that you can use in your writing if you have additional information. So um, we're talking about the surgeries, right? So the writer has introduced the idea, idea of surgeries, and then the additional information is that they're going to start with cataract procedures. I'm assuming cataract procedures must be high at the list of these backups. Must be a lot of people in Ontario who need that surgery. Um, additional information about a noun at the end of a sentence, separated from the main clause with a comma. So here we have including hip and knee replacements starting next year. So we have Premier Doug Ford and Health Minister Sylvia Jones announced a three-step plan Monday morning that would expand the types of surgeries that can be offered at private independent health facilities. So that's the types of surgeries. We've got additional information, so and that's so they put a comma in there, and then they include the additional information. And finally, we've got the subject of the sentence described in detail. So the subject of this sentence is the first phase, the first phase of this new plan. That's my subject. And the author has two things to say about it. The first one is that the first phase is focused on addressing the backlog of cataract surgeries, and... The first phase intends to add an additional 14,000 procedures in Windsor, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Ottawa through new partnerships with private surgical and diagnostic centers. So the author wanted to say two things about their subject. And they used the word and. And the word and is a conjunction, which is, of course, a connecting word. So very useful. When I grade papers in this course, one of the most common mistakes that I see in people's writing is, is a lack of conjunctions and a lack of these connecting words. So they're really important. And it, it's very important that as a writer, you focus on those words and you use them for good effect, right? So the way this sentence is structured is, is very nice and it... Uh, it really gets the point across, and we learn um, that there are two things related to this subject, right? So really important to pay attention to how professional writers compose their sentences so we can learn from them. Okay, so we've got a good half an hour here to delve into this assignment. So we're talking about assignment 43. So it's it's the last numbered assignment in the chorus, so it's it's the... It's the last um, assignment where you actually have to produce new material and new content. 
the last assignment in the chorus or the last, you know, um, the last thing you do is the literacy portfolio. And so for the portfolio, you're not actually writing anything new. What you're doing is just listing it all and compiling it in one source, which is an important job, right? But y this is the last time you'll have to produce new ideas. Um, sorry, I mean, aside from the final exam and the culminating, which you will uh, be definitely producing new ideas for that. But this is the last of the units. So the subject of this series of paragraphs, expressing an opinion, so that's what we're doing here, right? So you're expressing an opinion. There's that word express to push out. Um, and you're talking about your development throughout this course. So that's really what you're talking about, is how you've developed throughout this course. So you're talking about where you were on day one compared to where you are now. And, and, that's, a, and that's a really important thing um, to do in, in, in a lot of aspects of your life. You want to say, like, you know, where am I now compared to where I was this time last year um, in, re in, in respect to my career, to my relationships with people in my family, to, to what I really want to do in life, to, um, you know, like so many things. It's good to kind of gauge your process and to, and to write down, you know, um, what you've done and to like celebrate your achievements, right? So... And I, and I think that's a that's a, a really important lesson to to have in life. Um, it it's it's nice when other people do that. Like it's nice when someone slaps you on the back and shakes your hand or uh, thumbs up a post on Facebook or comments, you know, job well done. Like that's all great. It's awesome to get feedback from other people. And I think it's rewarding if you do it to somebody else. Like if you take somebody aside and say, hey. I like what you're doing. Good job. You know, that that's a good thing to do. But ultimately, you can't rely upon that. You can't rely upon other people to to do that. It's important that you do it yourself. And you're not bragging, you're not being self-centered. You know, I think it's a really important part about being a human being. You just take stock of what you've done and say, "Yeah, I am doing a good job. There's things I could do better. I'm not perfect, but you know, just take stock of what you've done and be proud of it. That's really important, right? Um, you are going to go through all the writing and reading assignments you've done and choose the most memorable and meaningful parts of your learning process, right? So which ones come to mind? Which ones are the most meaningful? And write an introduction for your portfolio. You are to submit both a rough copy and a final copy for marking. So that's really important, right? So yesterday we talked about portfolios and we talked about how an artist will use a portfolio to talk about themselves and to sell themselves and to convince someone they should hire them so sometimes those portfolios just stand on their own they're just out there but sometimes the writer kind of gives an introduction to it so and that's what you're doing. You're setting the stage. You're priming your reader. And then the reader knows what they're getting into, right? They're like, okay, this is why I put these things together. It's to, uh, to show myself, um, you know. And I would argue that, th that the, audience, the audience of this portfolio is, is your teacher, myself, because I'm going to grade it. But I would also argue that the audience is you. You know, you're, you're writing this for yourself. It's going to be great to look back on this in a, in a few years from now, 10 years from now. Just a, It's a nice way to record what you've done and be proud of it. So rough copy and final copy. So more on that in a sec. So it, it, there, there w I want to talk about making an outline today. But there already is a very basic outline that you have to follow. So you're writing four paragraphs. Number one is your intro paragraph. Number two is a paragraph about your best reading experience. A paragraph about your best pieces of writing. And so you notice that it's, uh, they've used that convention where there's the singular piece and the plural pieces of writing. So it's up to you. If you want to talk about one piece of writing that you feel is your best then go ahead and do that. 
if you want to talk about more than one, do that too. Um, it's only one paragraph, so I don't I don't think you should talk about five or six. It's probably going to get too jumbled and. And the more things you talk about, the less detail uh, you can go into, right? So there's like, a, you know, you, you often hear the phrase, um, you know, like sometimes people try to do, they try to do too much. And, you know, like it, it's it's always, not always, but like it's usually best to do a couple of things really, really well than to do like a whole bunch of things kind of like mediocre or like kind of half-assed so it's 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 really good to uh you know and and then that happens when you write and then when you try to just jam in way too much information and you give too much information to your reader like um and then you don't go into detail and expand upon it then you've just given your reader a lot of surface detail but you haven't given them a lot of depth right so you you have to um, introduce a few key ideas and then expand upon those key ideas. That's really important. They've, you know, they, they've done studies on the human brain and the human brain is an amazing thing and a lot of scientists tell you it's the most complicated thing in the universe. Uh, nothing in the universe that we know about um, comes even close to matching the complexity of a human brain. It can do a lot of amazing things. But when we're reading something or when somebody's telling us a story, we can really only keep two or three things in our mind at the same time. You know, like it's, um, if I tell you a story about like seven of my friends and I give you all their names, you're not going to remember them all. I it's going to be too much for you. And, you know, if I'm going to tell you a story about seven people, it's going to take a long time, and I'm going to have to, like, give you information about each one. But you could handle a story about one of my friends and maybe one or two of my friends, right, Or and, and then one thing they did. You know, it's hard for us to keep track of a lot of stuff, so is what I'm saying. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to focus, really focus and drill down on a couple of things and expand upon them, be specific, use details. When I mark assignments in this course, I'm always saying that. Be specific, focus. Um, if you go back to the first assignment of this course, the first writing assignment, where you're asked to look at the grandfather teachings, and you know I strongly urge students to just talk about one grandfather teaching or two because if you look at the grandfather teachings, they're they're really like they're they're huge ideas, like like love, like what is love, what I what is wisdom, what is bravery, what's respect. They're all really important aspects of being a human that um, you can't really do justice in a paragraph, right? It's so it's you need to really focus what you're doing. You know, don't just write about love, write about a very specific part of it, right? So. So I, I would suggest that to you. I would talk about one at most three of your pieces, okay? Don't go beyond that because you're not going to have the time to do it justice. Series of paragraphs expressing an opinion. Okay, so you will submit your series of paragraphs expressing an opinion to your teacher. Um, after it has been marked, you will make any needed, any needed revisions and include it as the introduction to your literacy portfolio. Um, regardless of how you choose to present it. So there's a rough copy, 15. A final copy is 25. So you will submit this assignment. Um, like, So I want, I want to make sure this is clear. So you will write a rough copy. You will edit the rough copy, make changes to it. Then you will produce a final copy. Then you hand that in to me. I will mark it. I will give you some feedback. And then you make some more revisions. And then you include it with your portfolio, okay? And we're, and, and we're just talking like kind of minor revisions, minor edits, right? So you're going to be editing this thing twice. You are, so, you know, so step one, you, you're going to edit slash revise your rough copy. 
And then the second time you edit, revise will be the final copy, right? So, so you edit, revise the rough copy to produce a final copy. And then you edit that final copy to include in your literacy portfolio. And as I, as I have spoken about many times in this chorus, that is how we become better writers. You become a better writer by editing. And I, I strongly believe that. I think that w when I reflect upon my experience as a, as a writer, I know for sure that the, the most important lessons I learned about writing were through my experiences editing. And so... Um, I used to work, I, I didn't work, I was a volunteer, and I volunteered at a, at, a, at a university library in Windsor, and it was a peer editing desk, and so students would come to me with their papers, and I would sit down with them, and I would edit it with them, and revise it with them, and it was a really rewarding experience, I loved doing it, um, I, w I, would, I would meet first year history students, fourth year psychology students, I once had a guy doing a PhD in microbiology and he gave me his PhD thesis which was like this like 70 page monster and you know I told him right off the bat I said like I don't um, I don't understand the content of what you're saying like I I'm, I'm not smart enough to know what you're talking about like this is way beyond my understanding but I can help you with the editing and the revising and the little things. Um, so I, I couldn't really help him with the big stuff, the big picture stuff, but I could certainly help him with the editing. And, and that, that's, the re that's really how you learn how to do it. Um, editing your own work and then editing somebody else's work. And, and, and that's really what the writing process is all about, is embracing the idea that nobody just sits down Nobody ever sits down and uh, has a blank page like this and just, just immediately just starts writing magic. You know, that, m that words just magically flow out of you. Um, sometimes it happens. I think it's rare. Um, and and if, you, if you read a lot of interviews or if you listen to podcasts with, like, famous authors and famous writers, a lot of them will tell you that it doesn't really work that way and you have to you know you have to put a lot of rough ideas on the page before you can get to the good stuff right so that's really important to keep in mind you've got to really embrace that writing process and see it as like just um getting better over time so like version one version two version three um you can a really good metaphor for this is like inventors or engineers and, and people who build stuff um, I, I often, you know, I heard a great, uh, quote in a book one time and, and it said like, you know, people don't learn how to, people didn't learn how to build bridges. Th we learned how to build bridges that don't fall down. Right. So we built a ton of bridges and a lot of bridges fell down and a lot of bridges fell apart and probably resulted in all kinds of tragic circumstances. So, and same with buildings, like look at um lo look at the amazing structures that humans can build like these monstrosities these skyscrapers that reach into the clouds right well how do we get there we we built a lot of buildings that fell down and then you and you look at the f and you when you look at it when it falls down and then you make something better so the writing's kind of the same way right so if you want to be a writer and you want to write short stories or you want to write novels and guess what? You're going to write a lot of bad no you're going to write a lot of bad writing, right? But you're going to get better at it. You're going to look at your writing and and, and find oh, I could change that. I can make that better. If you want to be a musician, you're going to write a lot of bad songs before you write the good ones. Um that's just part of the process, right? So see it as part of the process. See it as yourself getting better a little bit every day and you have to learn from your mistakes and you have to make mistakes. And you have to be okay with making mistakes. And that's hard, right? It's hard to, to make mistakes and be okay with making mistakes. Um, but that's what reflecting is, right? You, you have to look back and say, like, oh, okay. 
I wish I could do that better. Knowing what I know now, I would have changed that. So here's a brief overview of the assignments from OLC 4.0. So you have uh, journal entries. And if you go back to lesson 1, 2, 4, 5, 11, 12, and 15, there are seven journal entries from this course that you wrote. And, you know, you could see a progression, right? Or you should. You should see a progression from from 1 to 15. So that that's one way to approach this course, or sorry, this assignment, is to look back um, and you might want to contrast like one of your early pieces of writing versus one you did later in the course. So that's a good, um, you know, we, we call that a, you know, uh, a comparison or a contrast. So you could do, um, Maybe maybe you're you you maybe you're the most proud of your journal entry, right? So journal entry one versus journal entry fifteen. Have a look at your writing, look at your first journal entry, look at journal entry number fifteen. How are they different? How did you improve as a writer? Um, what skills did you pick up, right? So um, we have a news report, lessons three and thirteen, a brochure, lesson six. Information paragraph, you did two of them. Lesson 7, lesson 18. You did an opinion paragraph, lesson 8. Lesson 19, which is the one you're doing right now. Opinion piece, lesson 13. A cover letter and a resume, lesson 14 and 15. And a summary, lesson 17. Right? So, thinking back to assignment 42. If there is a career path or you know a job that you identified that you want to go into and then maybe you maybe you'd wrote a resume or a cover letter that delves into that you might want to talk about that and like you know if you've got a specific career in mind that you want to go into once you graduate high school or and get your Ontario secondary diploma your Ontario secondary school diploma you know talk about that you know this is my cover letter this is my resume I'm proud of this because I can use this um, yeah, so the cover letter resume is a good one to talk about because it lends itself to some pretty important concepts like I want to take my cover letter and resume, I want to use it to get a job, to start a new career, to support myself, my family, my community. And then you did a summary, uh, lesson 17. All right, so we need to create an outline, right? So what I want to do is I want to go paragraph by paragraph, okay? So... Let's look at that first paragraph, an introductory paragraph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my, em my, my blank notebook page here. And I'm just going to go right across here and turn this into my box shape. So you might want to do this with a pen and a paper. You might want to do this with a uh, a laptop, with a Word document open, whatever the case works for you. So I'm just going to go like this, you know. Paragraph 1, I'll use a short form. Paragraph 2, paragraph 3, paragraph 4. So it might seem logical to start with paragraph 1, but now that I think about it, I think we should we should change that. I uh, changed that up. Para I spelled paragraph wrong. That's going to bug me. That's got to go. So it might seem like paragraph one is the place to start, but I think we can't really write paragraph one until we figure a few things out. And what do we need to figure out? Let's go back and look. So we need a paragraph about our best reading experience and a paragraph about our best piece of writing. So paragraphs two and three are critical here. We really can't go beyond that. We need to figure that out. So paragraph two is the best reading you did. And paragraph three is your best, remember, piece or pieces of writing. 
All right. So when you, when you draft your outline, I, I would start with something like this. So um, maybe whatever comes to mind most easily, either your best reading experience or your best writing experience. So in terms of reading, um, you know, we did Rob Taylor's article. You read lots of news reports. Uh, the big one, Jimmy Comes Home, right? Right, so, wha so what I would do is I would just jot down the, the first things that come to mind. So, and that's a really useful tool when you're brainstorming. Um, sometimes the, the things that come to your mind immediately are the ones that you can probably write about the most easily. That's not always the case. Sometimes there's things that are kind of buried in your brain and you have to do some work to digging it up. But if you like sit down with someone or like somebody interviewed you and they said like, what's the happiest moment of your life? Or like, what's the, f what, 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 what's the, what's the best thing that happened to you last year? Or like, What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food, right? And you just jot down a list. The first three or five or whatever ideas that come to you, there's probably a reason why those things come to you first, right? So what comes to mind immediately, right? So um, when, when I think back to myself um, in this course, you know, um, a as someone who loves novels, who loves reading, I I'd probably go with Jimmy Comes Home. Um, and so I'd make a note to myself here, um, and I would say, pick, um, favorite chapter, uh, or scene. So if I'm going to do this assignment, my best reading experience is going to be about Jimmy Comes Home. And I'm going to pick my favorite uh, scene or my favorite chapter. Probably the scene's probably better. So, but I can, I, I can pick my favorite scene or chapter to talk about. So, and, and this, is, this is really important. Um, if, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of students over the years and given them a lot of guidance. And time management is, is a really important tool that is really it, it it's just so important for being a student it's important for any any job really um most jobs come down to time management and it's it's about doing a good job but it's knowing what has to be done first and what has to be done you know what what's my top 3 priorities today um and i think when you're writing and you're and when you're taking an English course, whether that be elementary school, high school, or university level, you have to know that if you want to produce something meaningful, if you want to produce good writing, it's gonna take time, and you don't want to waste time doing stuff that's not gonna lead you down the the path where you want to go. So if you can be specific, it's gonna make it easier for you to write about it, and it's gonna save you time. So, so don't write about Jimmy Comes Home, the novel. That it, it's way too big of a subject to delve into uh, in a paragraph. Write about your favorite chapter, your scene, um, or, you know, uh, your favorite character, right? I, I learned this by, I, I used to teach uh, a course at Confederation College, and I would give my students writing assignments, but I would leave them too open-ended. And my students would often complain and say, I, I can't think of anything to write about. And my first reaction was like, how can you not think of anything to write about? There's so, much, there's so many cool things to write about. And they were like, they were just stuck. But once I made my writing prompts and my assignments more specific, it, it gave them a better jumping off point. So, so do that. Do yourself a favor. Give yourself a good jumping off point. Pick something specific that you can write about. All right. So your best piece of writing, okay? Now, um, the, the best piece of writing, so, so you're talking about your best piece of reading and your best piece of writing. 
um, the easiest way to do this would be to 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 you know to to make a connection between the two, right? Because th there should be a direct connection, a direct correlation between your best reading and your best writing. They might not be related, but um, if you can find a way to do that, it might uh, it might help. So I if you choose to write about Jimmy Comes Home and your and your favorite character or your favorite scene, your best piece of writing um, could be it could be the news report. Uh, based based on Jimmy Comes Home. Or maybe like um, a related assignment. And so you see how this 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 planning phase is really critical and I, I think sometimes based on my conversations with some students they might feel that like the planning process is a waste of time and they just want to jump right into the part where they make the thing but they realize the planning process is, is really important so I'm actually just remembering a, a really amazing story I read of, about the band Green Day so um, the band Green Day uh, produced and released an album called American Idiot and I think it's their best selling album it, it's got to be up there um, but the the story goes is that the band went to a studio they they recorded basically an entire album it wasn't ready yet but they had all the songs written and then there was a fire or a theft involved and and somehow all of the stuff they had written and recorded got it went missing. They had they didn't have it anymore. So in their brains, they they knew those songs and they had notebooks and they could have recreated all of those songs, but they were they were so devastated by what happened. They took a few weeks off and just went back to their families and like couldn't believe what happened. But then they had a band meeting, and then what they did was they decided to just scrap all those songs, write a brand new album. But they said that like that experience actually led to them making that album. Like it was like that was sort of like their practice run that got them to where they're going. So, so see this as not it's not a waste of time, and it really does lead you to a good place. Th this pre-planning, putting down ideas, um, it really does lead you on the right path. Okay, so once you've got your best reading picked out, you've got your best piece of writing picked out. Then you can go back to paragraph one, and then you've got your best reading, right? You've got your best writing. And here's the important part, right? Your, your topic sentence, your topic sentence, it, it connects them, right? It connects those things. You, it connects the best reading and the best writing. You know, what is the connection between them, right? And then I would argue that your, your conclusion is going to be, you know, what you learned. You know, what you learned. Uh, you know, what you or what I, uh, what I learned, what I did, um, and then you're going to mention or you know summarize paragraphs 1 2 and 3 so that's all the time we have today but i'm hoping that 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 outlining that i've just demonstrated gives you a, a, a an outline and it gives you a place to start so tomorrow maybe we'll touch upon this assignment really quickly but that's it for today and then we'll um We'll, we'll finish up tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.